following our most popular videos ever, we decided it was time to once again try and mathematically predict the next Bitcoin bull market peak. But this time we're going to be doing our most advanced BTC forecast yet. Today we're going to be once again trying to mathematically predict the next BTC bull cycle peak. And just a little bit of context if you're new to this series, what we try to do here is just look at a few metrics. Previously we've used the Pi Cycle Top tool and then use that to try and mathematically predict the Bitcoin all time high. And this is not only our most popular video ever, but our fourth most popular and our eighth most popular. So everyone seems to love this. So I thought it was time to revisit, especially considering the data is always changing and especially considering after all of these previous predictions using the Pi Cycle Top, we've now created a chart specifically using this exact logic. So I'm kind of out of luck here because I have to come up with a new way that we can predict the BTC cycle top. But just out of curiosity, if you weren't aware, the Pi cycle top indicator uses two moving averages, the 350 day multiplied by a value of two and the 111 day moving average. And what we can see on this chart here is when we get these vertical dotted lines, it indicates that the 111 day has crossed above the 350 day, which typically has happened just within a few days of a Bitcoin cycle peak. And now on the Bitcoin Magazine Pro website, what you can do is actually look at the Pi Cycle Top Prediction specific chart, which is again, pretty much using the exact same logic we've been using in this video series, where we're just taking the current trend of these two moving averages, plotting out when they're predicted to currently intercept. Right now, as I film this about an hell before this video goes live, they're predicted to cross on January the 15th, 2026, which if history, if history, sorry, is any indication would indicate that that date might be within just a few days of Bitcoin's market peak happening. But like I said, we now have to come up with a new Bitcoin price prediction cycle peak tool. It's all well and good having this, but it doesn't make for a very exciting video for me to just read out one number on the chat. So what I've decided to do is to go a completely different route. And this took a very long time to do. What I've done here is used a Monte Carlo simulation method. So what I'm doing here is essentially taking all of the Bitcoin days returns from the cycle lows we've had, which was, if I just go to this chart here, about 791 days ago. So I've given you a little bit of an insight, but what I can do is just come back here and taken the average daily returns of the previous 791 days, as well as the standard deviation of volatility, the range we see on those days, to basically try and predict and simulate how Bitcoin's price could play out given our current price action. So what I've also done is if we just go into this chart here and compare our current cycle to our previous two cycles, we can see that we're currently aligning pretty nicely with these two. But the interesting part here is if we look at our previous cycle, the Bitcoin cycle peaked after 1059 days and the cycle before that was 1067 days. So we can actually just take an average of those two, about 1063 days and model out the remaining 200 or so days of our current cycle to give us an indication of where price could top out. So this chart looks completely crazy. What this is, is a hundred different simulations of how price action could play out, ranging from lows topping out way before 200 and however many days it was, topping out way before them and setting lows at around $40,000, all the way to running up to above $600,000. Now, what you'll notice is this type of simulation produces what's called a normal distribution curve. So just reload it so I can draw on the chart here. What we can see is we're obviously going to get a lot of outliers when we do this type of simulation. We're going to get extremes to the upside and the downside. But what we can do from that is take a bit of a baseline, a bit of an average, a median, most likely occurring path to get uh, our prediction for this. So we can see there's a few that come down here and then a huge bulk of the predictions are in the middle of this curve here. And then it comes like that. So yeah, we do get some very high predictions. We do get some very low predictions, but most are coming into about this region here. And as I said, there are some other statistical probability methods to doing this type of probability, prediction analysis, etc. But this Monte Carlo random walk type I thought was good for this video. So as I said, what we can see on this 100 plus simulations is there's a hundred different ways Bitcoin's price action could go out. There's a million different ways Bitcoin's price action could go out. But I did this simulation over a dozen times. So we have over a thousand simulations to actually come to the conclusion of this data. And what I've done is averaged all of that down to give us the most likely path given Bitcoin's current price action and data trend of how price could play out. And that looks something like this. So I'll just zoom out so you can see the chart a little better here. 
there we go. So what we can see is this red line here, I'm just gonna hide myself for a second as well, is Bitcoin's price action up until today, the 21st of January. And then this blue line is the price action going forward. So what I've done is taking the median of all of these simulations for every single day going forward, which would take us to the 18th of October, 2025, and would peak out at about $198,000, just beneath that. But considering this is just the closing prices, it wouldn't be completely out of the question to assume we could have a wick higher to say $200,000. But yeah, this is our current best bet prediction based on this random walk Monte Carlo simulation using Bitcoin's current data and price action. Is this likely how Bitcoin's price is going to play out? Probably not. But it is interesting to note that if we are to continue this trend, that this is something that we could look for. And another interesting thing we can do is if I just go onto the customize option here, I did this in Google Sheets. I did originally do this in Python, but for good reason, I then did it in Sheets as well, which may become more apparent in the coming weeks. But what I can do is actually turn on this here, which might be a bit harder to see, I'll make it a bit thicker, which is the 111 day moving average, the pi cycle top 111 day. Then what I could also do is add on the 350 day multiplied by a value of two. And what we can see, I might need to just make this logarithmic, is if we are to follow this trajectory, this price action median Monte Carlo simulation random walk going forward to $200,000, we wouldn't actually have a pi cycle top cross this cycle. They'd actually remain fairly equidistant the, with the 350 day moving average topping out at somewhere around 260,000, while the 111 day would only be about 170,000. And this is because, of course, when using this type of analysis, it's assuming a pretty constant trend of price appreciation. What we can see is we can practically draw a line straight through like this. So, of course, like we said, this isn't going to be incredibly accurate. If we do see a blow off top like 2017, we could see price follow this before going exponential, before maybe a double top where we come back down like the previous cycle. Nobody knows. It's always better to react than to predict, but it is useful to look at this type of analysis to basically say, if we are to continue this rate of appreciation and average deviation from that norm going forward, then this is how price could look. But one other thing to note as well is when doing this type of analysis, this didn't just look at the average, the most likely outcome. This is looking at the median simulation going forward. But of course, if we go back to this chart here, we can see there's a huge deviation, some reaching above $600,000, some reaching, well, some have already set the highs before setting lows at around $40,000. So this is where we took look at different types of averages. So for the average, I looked at the median, which is the most likely, what's the most common of these simulations occurring, which was $200,000 as a peak. But the average, which takes into account the huge predictions we get above that average and the predictions we get below that average actually came to about 230,000. If I just go onto the raw data here, might be difficult to see, but if I scroll all the way down past all these simulations, it was, I've actually deleted it. It was, take my word for it, it was $230,000 was the average peak when taking into account the extreme outliers in this data, but the most likely being $200,000 on a date of October 18th, 2025 or was it October the 19th? October 19th, 2025. Also, if you haven't already, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to ensure you're receiving all of our content as soon as it's released. And make sure to check out all the resources we discussed today as well as the many more that are all available on BitcoinMagazinePro.com, your number one source for Bitcoin analysis. So just to summarize, this Monte Carlo style simulation takes into account the median daily returns and the returns deviation to randomly predict the next day's returns. So yeah, I think the average daily returns we've seen during this cycle was, I've actually got the numbers here to read out, was 0.2677%, sorry. And the average deviation we've seen is 3.656% if you want to do this type of analysis yourself. But... Once taken into account those, we can randomly predict the next day's price appreciation or depreciation and then continue that going forward. And while, of course, there are more sophisticated probability and statistical processes that exist, such as Markov chains, which take into account the previous day's price appreciation or depreciation to have further influence on the next one and plenty of other ones, realistically, all forecasts should be taken with, taken with a lather. Let me start again. 
all forecasts should be taken with a rather large grain of salt. It's much better to react to the data than pr predict. Of course, looking at the Pi Cycle Top Prediction Tool is great to give us some idea of how long this cycle took, could take to play out. And looking at analysis like this gives us a better indication of potentially how that price section could look going forward. But realistically, the thing that drives markets isn't $200,000 price targets or isn't two moving averages on a chart. It's supply and demand economics. When we see a huge amount of people selling, looking at on-chain data, that's usually a good indication that a top may be occurring. And really these things, while fun and can be useful, we need to be acting on the real underlying data rather than having these price targets. But in doing so, using hundreds of these simulations, by the time I actually finished all, it was probably thousands of these simulations of BTC price action, based on all of this data up to this point of the cycle and assuming a Bitcoin price action peak occurring at approximately the same time as our previous cycles, about 1,063 days into the cycle, the most likely, the median average price peak was $200,000, but the average top was $230,000 when taking into account those big deviations to the upside and the downside. But about 50% of all of these simulations landed within about $160,000, $170,000 all the way up to about $230,000, $240,000. So that $200,000 medium was slap bang in the middle of those predictions. If you like this video, then please visit BitcoinMagazinePro.com where our analytics help you to cut through the noise to make informed data-driven decisions about Bitcoin. With over 150 live charts, personalized indicator alerts, in-depth crypto industry reports, API access, and more all for a fraction of the standard industry price. And don't forget to check out the brand new Pi Cycle Top Prediction tool we have. Even if we don't see a Pi Cycle Top cross this cycle, it'll still be incredibly useful just to help manage your risk and gain some understanding of how fast this cycle is really playing out. And again, let me know your thoughts below in the comments and on social media what your thoughts are on this type of Monte Carlo simulation analysis. Let me know how you would mathematically predict the next Bitcoin bull cycle peak and let me know approximately what price and what time you think that could happen. I look forward to reading and replying to them. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.